we left off here and uh, my drawings weren't working, right? But we were talking about hydrogen ions. And one of the points that I wanted to make is that a hydrogen ion is a hydrogen atom that has given away its electron. And so now a hydrogen uh, ion is actually, oops, a hydrogen ion is actually just a naked proton, okay? So hydrogen ion is a proton and it is also abbreviated H plus, all right? So it's important to remember that because believe it or not, you will be reading that term hydrogen ion a lot in your textbook and they will use it interchangeably with the word proton. And I know for the longest time, I thought these were three different things. I thought hydrogen ion, proton, H plus, I thought they were three different things. My life would have been easier if I would have known that they were not three different things. Now, the first place that this is important is when we're talking about the pH scale, all righty? Now, the pH scale um, is how we measure acids and bases, okay? So if we say something is really acidic, or if we say something is very basic, and basic things are also known as alkaline, if we're saying those things, then we're talking about the pH scale. And why is it called the pH scale? Because it has everything to do with hydrogen ions. First of all, let, for those of you who have learned this before and it didn't stick like me, when I was first learning it, I thought this had everything to do with positively charged ions and negatively charged ions. It doesn't. I know, right? No, it doesn't have to do with pluses and minuses. You will notice that whether something is very acidic solution or very alkaline solution, the pluses and minuses in that solution always even out to zero, okay? So what is it? It is the ratio, it's the ratio of hydroxides to hydrogen ions. That's what it is, okay? Now, let me go back here. I'm gonna erase stuff. Mm. Medium eraser. Okay, oh dear. Okay, so let's imagine that you have got a glass full of perfect, pristine, beautiful water, okay, from some mountain spring somewhere. Right? If you do, then you have got lots and lots of H2O. H2O, 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 billions of them, right? Now, in any glass of water, the H2O molecule generally sticks together. However, it's sad, but there comes a time when water molecules will break apart, and when they do, the hydrogen ion will leave the hydroxide ion. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that the hydrogen ion is now an ion and the hydroxide ion is an ion. How did that happen? Well, the OH part of the water molecule, it said, okay, hydrogen, you can leave if you want to, but you are not taking the electron with you. The electron stays with me. So now the hydrogen, as it left, it left as an ion, it left as a proton, and that's why it's abbreviated H plus, right? And the hydroxide, now it's got an extra electron. It has one more electron than it has protons, and that is why it is abbreviated as an OH minus. Now, if we started out with an equal number with nothing but pure water, then the number of hydrogen ions would be equal to the number of hydroxide ions in this particular glass of water, right? It, I mean, that just kind of makes sense. If segment eraser, stroke eraser, it, it would just make sense. Because where would we get extra hydrogen ions or extra hydroxide ions? We, we wouldn't be able to get them from anywhere. So, don't get a chance to do that. Hmm. Um, but 
There are such things as acidic solutions and alkaline solutions. How do those things happen? Well, let's go ahead and do an acidic solution first. Okay. Here I've got my perfectly beautiful glass of water, and I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid to it. Okay. When I add hydrochloric acid to it, I am going to add HCl. And HCl is not a very happy molecule. It parps apart all the time. And when it does, you end up having a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion, a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion, a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion. And now what do I have? Instead of having one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide, I have got one, two, three, I've got four hydrogen ions, and I still only have one hydroxide, right? So if I have got more hydrogen ions than I have hydroxides, then I have got an acidic solution. Now, I got to admit that usually, that usually in biology, instead of calling this an acidic solution, usually we will call this an acid. Don't be lazy like we are, okay? An acid is a different thing, and you need to know the definition for your first exam. We'll get to it in a second. But what's important for you to know from this slide is when we have got an equal number of hydrogen ions and hydroxides, we would have a neutral solution. When we've got more hydrogen ions than we have hydroxides, we have got an alkaline solution. Right. Now, let's do one more. Let's do one more glass of water. OK, from this glass of water. Again, I'm mostly going to have water molecules that are together. Water molecules stay together pretty good. But every so often they pop apart and you end up with a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion. Okay, but now it's neutral because we've got the same number of hydrogen ions as we have hydroxides. I showed you what happened when I made an acidic solution. Let's make an alkaline solution. In an alkaline solution, the, there will be more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. Um, if I wanted to add a base to this, a good example of base is lye. Lye is sodium hydroxide. It is not a happy molecule. So you put it in water and it'll pop apart really easily. And it turns into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Sodium ion, hydroxide ions and sodium ions. Sodium ions and hydroxide ions, okay? Now, I want you to notice all the pluses and minuses. If you add them all up, they still add up and they're equal to each other. That's not what makes something acidic or alkaline. In this case now, we have got one hydrogen ion and we have got four hydroxides. Okay? The fact that we've got more hydroxides than we have hydrogen ions, that's what makes a solution alkaline. Now, let's look here at this lovely pH scale. And it reminds me to make sure that you remember that acids are different from acidic solutions. Just now we were talking about acidic solution, but now I want you to know the definition of an acid or a base. An acid is a chemical, an acid, an acid is a chemical compound that donates hydrogen ions to a solution. Meaning if I take an acid whatever it is, this chemical, and throw it into some water, it is going to release hydrogen ions. Now, that's what an acid is. Hydrochloric acid is an acid because it's HCl. When you throw it in water, it pops apart, and you get lots of extra hydrogens, definition of an acid. A base is the opposite. Now, I usually think of it as something that donates hydroxides. Technically, it steals hydrogen ions whichever, okay? Um, but it's the opposite of an acid. The pH scale describes the acidity of a solution. Right? And in an acidic solution, 
I want you to know that the pH scale, seven is a completely neutral number, and the pH scale from, goes from zero to 14. If I told you, oh, I've got this crazy strong acid, uh, I'm sorry, alkaline substance in my hand, and it's got a pH of 15, you would say, Tidell, you do not, because the pH scale only goes up to 14, all right? So remember that the pH scale goes from zero to 14, neutral is seven, the higher the number up to 14, the more alkaline something is, the lower the number down to zero, the more acidic something is. While we're here, let's just take a moment to um, look at the pH of different things in the world, okay? So distilled water should have a pH of seven. It might surprise you to learn that human blood, not particularly neutral. So right now, if I had the magical power through my computer, to cause you to have blood with a pH of seven, you actually wouldn't live very long because a pH of seven will damage your enzymes by a process called denaturing and you'd die. Um, but I wouldn't do that, all right? Um, and look at some of the things that are acidic solutions. Look at apple juice, a pH of three, really? Look at your gastric juice. Almost everything that you drink, even, apple juice is actually going to make your stomach acid less acidic. People will say, oh, tomato juice is really acidic. It gives me heartburn. Well, not compared to your stomach acid, it's not. Look over here, things that are alkaline, egg whites. Who knew, right? Okay. This is just another image of the pH scale. Um, it's just vertical instead of horizontal. Remember, it goes from zero up to 14, um, does not go past 14. pH is neutral when it's seven. Human blood is just a little bit on the alkaline side of neutral. What I like about this image is you can see that this glass of water has got one, two, three, four hydroxides and one, two, three, four hydrogen ions. When you've got an equal number of hydrogen ions and hydroxides, you've got a neutral pH. And here you see we've got one, two, three, We've got six hydrogen ions and only two hydroxides. When you have more hydrogen ions than hydroxides, you're in an acidic solution. And the greater that imbalance, the more the hydrogen ions compared to hydroxides, the more acidic the solution is. And alkaline or basic is the opposite, right? Now, before we end this lecture, let's talk about buffers. Buffers are substances that resist a change in pH. Okay, let's start off with something that might be on the exam. Let's imagine I had two glasses of water here, right? One is pure distilled water, it's got a pH of seven. One started off as pure distilled water, but I have put a buffer into that pure distilled water. They both have a pH of seven. They're both particularly neutral. Now, I'm going to take a tablespoon of hydrochloric acid and dump a tablespoon of hydrochloric acid into each glass of water. As soon as I dump hydrochloric acid into my distilled water, I'm going to end up causing that glass of distilled water to have a more acidic pH. So the pH of my water might drop down to, I don't know, three, four, pick a number, okay? But if I put that same tablespoon into the glass of water that had buffer in it, the buffer might make it so that the pH stays seven, right? That's what we mean by buffers are substances that resist a change in pH. Buffers are chemicals that are found in your cells and in your blood. And when there are extra hydrogen ions that show up like hydrochloric acid that are trying to make your blood too acid, they steal those hydrogen ions. They accept hydrogen ions when there's too many hydrogen ions. And when there are not enough hydrogen ions, they donate the hydrogen ions. I think of buffers as being like a damp kitchen sponge. If you've got a damp kitchen sponge and there was something sticky over on that side of the counter, right? You could take your damp kitchen sponge and squeeze out a little bit of water so that you could dissolve that sticky stuff and clean it up, right? 
So a buffer is like that. When you need more water, here you go, a little bit more hydrogen ions. On the other hand, that same kitchen sponge that one second ago I was able to squeeze out water, I can go over here and soak up some water, right? So they give away hydrogen ions when there's not enough hydrogen ions in the solution, but they soak up hydrogen ions when there are too many hydrogen ions, like a damp kitchen sponge. And like a damp kitchen sponge, they also can get saturated. So buffers are great, but just like a sponge, they can only accept so many hydrogen ions, and then they're like a soak sponge, they just can't soak up anymore. All right, we're going to stop there, and I will see you on the next lecture.